Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite camp with a limp, and that's right, I'm here with Core Space. I'm finally uh, ready to run this big game that I have been talking about for the past couple of videos. Hope you guys enjoyed that little startup where I just fast forwarded through the setup of the map, just so you guys can kind of see how all that works. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. Now, I ended up changing it up just a little bit. I wanted to have more second level stuff in this one. I mean, you guys can see I set up a huge map here. Uh, the only thing was those games I think will be great for play, but they're not going to be as great for filming. Uh, I found when I was trying to add some more second level stuff that a lot of it was just getting in the way and I was having to kind of keep in my mind's eye what's that going to look like when I'm filming down on it, trying to show you guys everything that's going on. And I thought it would just add too much difficulty. So I didn't add too much in there. Of course, we still have Zed's bar over here. We got Zed up in there, some gang planks and some other stuff going on over here. So uh, this uh, area I kind of left open though. I wanted you guys to be able to see what was going on. Otherwise, I would consistently have to pause the camera to pull tops off and show you guys, you know, what's going on underneath it. It just uh, would deflect from it a little bit too much. All right, so we're going to have a very, very big game here. I've come up with the scenario that I'm going to uh, to go with. Uh, let's start over here. You guys can see my three crew members from the previous mission. OK, so their ship is parked right there at the edge. They come in at the dock and they have arrived here at this city area where Zed's bar is and some other industrial stuff. And they escaped from the Galactic Core prison to come here to rescue their buddy. And the way I decided to handle it, because Renton is the character you guys voted on to be uh, the next crewmate or the, the crewmate that they're looking for. So he is joining back up with them. And he's basically been hanging with Zed and his crew uh, at this point up until now because his captain and his buddies were all captured. So he really had nowhere else to go. I decided that the the gang's going to be hostile, all right? But they're not going to be hostile immediately. If you guys have seen Altered, uh, Altered Carbon uh, early on in the season when the main character finds his sister and they turn against everyone and they just start killing everyone, it'll be kind of like, you know, this scene. Me! Me! I'm the guy! I know everyone! They have who they hang out with, who they talk to. I got phone numbers, addresses. I know who they're fucking. I know where they live. We could kill everyone. But yeah, that's the general premise. When the captain and the crew get over here and rent and see them, they're going to have that mindset of, that's right, we're back. Okay, we're together. And then they're going to start gunning everyone down, taking out everyone. So this uh, scenario is going to have every faction against every single faction. We're going to have my guys. So we're going to have the pirate traders versus the gangers versus the purge versus the civilians versus the galactic gore. And everyone is going to be hostile to everyone. And we're going to see how this pans out. But I wanted something a little more than just run in and get him. Okay, so they're not going to attack Renton. They're still going to think Renton's on their side up until my guys come in because he's not going to realize what's going on until he sees the captain and his buddies and like, okay, these are my guys. And that's when he's going to switch sides over to my side and be helping my guys out. But what Zed up here has done is he's activated some type of tractor beam that has captured my ship and it's made it to where we can't leave. So after we reconnect with Renton, that's when he tells us, hey, your ship can't leave. He did that so he could take you guys out, take all your stuff, keep your ship. So we're gonna have to go over here where I've set up an objective marker and spend an action to deactivate the tractor beam that's holding our ship in place. And then we're gonna have to make it back out through the facility, which will probably at this point, be full of galactic core and purge so <laughs> we'll have to see how all that uh, plays out purge are going to be appearing everywhere in this one there are six of these on markers there's one here one here 
and one over here in this corner behind the dice tray. And the same thing on the back side. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the purge can appear everywhere on this map. There's no telling where they're going to appear and they're going to be attacking everyone. Plus we are including the big purge. So let me grab my models over here. The, the baddest of the bad, the mother spider queen uh, chick does have the possibility to appear in this match as well as the Annihilator. And this is the only enemy in the game that can't be taken out in a single hit. Actually, let me show you guys their uh, little enemy cards here. Here's the one for the queen. And you can see she is just, she's beefy. Four uh, attack at close range, three shields, which means to take her out, you have to do four hits in one attack, which is damn near unheard of. I have no weapon capable of that right now, so I can't even damage her uh, at this point. But the neat thing is if you actually are able to kill the queen, oh, and she's got her little spiderlings, she's got five spiderlings, you can't damage her until you kill her spiderlings, which are also shielded, so this thing's a beast. Uh, with if, uh, if and when you kill her, she drops these little tokens, which can be exchanged for the most powerful weapon I have seen in the game. Five dice. That is just brutal. Five dice up to medium range and then three at long range. That's the, the utmost most powerful weapon in the game. Uh, she is a beast, the gatherers. Okay, so she's awesome. And then we have the Annihilator. He is coming to take you. Yeah, he's Arnold now. Uh, but he's the only one that cannot be killed in one hit, all right? So everyone else, all the NPCs rather, not my guys, my guys have health, uh, traders have health, but everything else, if you actually get a hit past their armor, they die, okay? He doesn't, he actually has three modes. There's full power and then uh, damaged, which uh, reduces his stats, and then there's Failing, which reduces his stats even more. So you have to hit him here, then here, then here, and then he goes down. Only Purge that actually has uh, multiple uh, levels like that. And he has this little notch. So they gave the ability to put upgrades into him, which you only put upgrades in this guy if you're like, you know, just hurting, if you're a sadist to, to take pain. There, I, there's no guarantee he's going to be in our game, but there is a, an event card for him and for the Spider Queen. I would actually be lucky if I did not draw that event card or if I drew it early or didn't draw it at all because it depends on where this track is on what's going to happen. And the track only, I think, has to be at like Cover Me before they are going to pop out. Oh, and this is the other side of the track. This is the one that has... Uh, the Annihilator on it, the Spider Queen on it. It has all that type stuff. So you have to really be on your, your P's and Q's because some bad Mama Jamas uh, can come out during this. A lot of guys, Galactic Core. Uh, there are civilians shown on here and other gangers. I'm going to treat those all like security and Galactic Core because all the civilians and gangers are already on the board. They've all started on the board, so those are just gonna be the security forces, which are the only ones who haven't started on the board. Show you the gang members. We got Chunk over here. He's the only one I can remember by name besides Zed. Uh, this lady, this one, this one over here, and then this one tucked in there. All the gang members who are part of little Zed's gang, which are gonna be against us when we get started. And then civilian-wise, We've got our three from the first one. So he's here, the lady and the doctor's making a return. And then we've got two from the Zed's thingy, this guy. And there's one more hidden around here somewhere. I can't remember where the hell I put him. Oh, fish boy, he's over here. So uh, just some other civilians. There's five civilians on the board. That's gonna be a lot of just mayhem thrown in there because they could attack me, they could help me. They could attack the purge, they could attack the gangers. They could attack the, the Galactic core, the Galactic cop guys. They can attack anyone. They can just run around and cause chaos. And I did put a couple of cur uh, Purge on the board to start, just to, to have them there so there's a little something going on. 
So the premise of the story is my guys, right, way over there, uh, escaped from the prison and they came here to pick up their one remaining buddy for the flesh out their pirate crew. But the purge had invaded the prison and they followed and the Galactic Corps followed the pirates here. The purge have arrived first and they're going to start trying to do their wipe out all sentient life thing. And then the Galactic Corps is going to come in trying to capture me and then end up fighting the purge and the gangers and everybody else. Oh, and I did find out uh, some interesting rules for this game. I know I'm, I'm talking a lot, but I'm trying to tell you guys everything. Uh, for core space that I did not know about that someone had uh, created and it looks freaking awesome. Uh, the rules for replacing the purge with Nemesis characters. So if you guys don't know Nemesis, it's kind of like the board game version of Aliens. It's got alien xenomorph morph looking bad guys in it. And it's a rule set on how to incorporate them into the Purge games so you could be fighting like evil aliens. Now, I don't have Nemesis yet, but I did back the, the latest version for the, the new game, Lockdown, that they're doing. So uh, maybe when that releases in like a year, I'll do that. But I'll see if I have any other um, alien figures I might be able to include later on instead of just having a Purge as the enemies. And now we could have aliens and it's larva that take over your guys and do like the whole chest bursting thing real cool stuff uh go to bgg and look up core space check out the uh the uh, file section to find that uh one last thing here's my guys all their little pegboards skills they got one extra skill up for completing the previous mission so they got to add a little skill on there and a point of health except for Mac, he doesn't get to add a point of health because he's a machine. He's as healthy as he's going to be. And what I did doesn't kind of work thematically, but I figured it was the easiest way to do it because I was like, what am I going to do as far as gear for Renton is concerned? And basically what I did is took what I had remaining. I had bagged up all the stuff from the previous game and set it to side because it has been a few months since I've been able to play this. And I just divided it between the four people. I know Renton shouldn't have had some of that stuff, but he would have gear normally anyway, since he's working with the ganger. So I kind of figured eh, it's not perfect, but it works. So I divided it all out between uh, everyone. This is what they've got. And that way I don't have to worry about trying to start Renton with nothing or drag gear to him. Cause that was my thought process. Like, do I take and bring weapons to him or, you know, how am I going to handle this? Like this way it'll be better because otherwise they're not going to be able to really carry much on them. All right, but that is the board set up. You guys can see there is stuff everywhere. One last little pan over before we get started. I've just put little crates down everywhere, mixed around the board, even one up there on that uh, walkway over there if I can get there. And I did grab out some extra minis just in case because since this is such a big map, I wanted to have extra of the generic purge guys just in case I needed them. So I'm just going to use the blue ones for that in case I run out of these and uh, maybe extras for the Devastators. We'll see how that uh, pans out. Now, we've got our hardback book laid out here. Remember, we go hostility phase, traitor phase, purge phase, NPC phase, which is basically everyone who's not a traitor or purge. So our gangers, our cops civilians, all that's going to happen during that time. And assessment is basically our uh, cleanup phase. And then nice little flow chart here on how everything goes. Definitely like this hardbound deluxe rule book. Really, really uh, nice. All the extra information in there. So hostility phase uh, is just going to be the adding the peg and drawing an event card. I've already got our pegs put in here, started it up into guarded. So we're going to already have the chance for purge guys to be coming out. Remember, we add a peg per round. And then once for each shot that is taken, we will add a peg as well. So I see a lot of that going on. And like I said, I've included damn near every card that I have. I have ganger cards, civilian cards, purge cards, the, the high level purge cards, everything is in this deck so i put the big baddies in there we'll just have to see what we draw all right let's get started 
Gang activity is our first one. Uh, we are in relax to watch our back. Place the two lowest ranked available gangsters at the nearest uh, entry point to a traitor. Hmm. Let me think. Because I think that would only work if I were placing uh, thugs on the board who were already not on the board. And these guys are already on the board over here. So I don't know if I'm going to go with that one because I would have to move them off the board. So yeah, all the uh, the gang ones are already on there. I should have just taken those gang ones out, but I wanted to give them a chance for it. So we'll ignore that for the time being and we will get started onto our guys. Remember our actions are how many these little blue dots up here, how many actions we can take each round. All my guys have two actions. You can have the actions be uh, move, attack, close range attack, the, the basic stuff you would uh, anticipate having. Plus you get your one free action, which is the smaller stuff like using a minor item, moving an extra inch, opening a door, stuff like that. It's gonna be your, your free action each round. Okay, so my guys are all starting over there and I know I wanna to try to search some of these cases, but I wanna search the rooms too to see what I can get. There's a little weapons emporium right here in the center big crate there i want to try to grab some smaller crates down over here but the big crates are the only place to get the double length uh tokens the big ones and those are my best chance to find a weapon that i can actually do some damage to those uh hard level purge with uh there are some small weapons that can but not really and the thing of it is is i don't know what's in these crates i i swear to you i put them in a bowl randomly drill them and put them in the crates without looking. So there could be really good items or I could fight my way to something for nothing to find out there's there's junk in the crate, you know, just some credits or something. So we'll just have to see how that pans out. Let's, let's go with Mac activating first and I'm gonna move him towards this crate. See if I can get over to that. Let's see if I... Go there and one extra inch cause it's a four inch move. That'll get me up to that crate and I can do a search action and then get another move. So I should be able to end right about there down away from it and have him cut up this way cause I'm probably gonna spread my guys out cause otherwise I'll never be able to find enough crates to get something. So Mac is going to do that. He will finish his move here after he has opened the crate. Now I don't have to move him around twice. So basically moved once, used a search action, and then used his free action for a little extra inch move. All right, let's dump this out, see what we got in here. God, I love these little crates that they have uh, items in there. And it's a bunch of junk health, breach door and health. So something he can't use because he doesn't have a health bar. So none of that crap works for him. So we will just leave all of this behind because that does him no good, unfortunately. Well, damn, that was a waste. Mac, you're killing me here, buddy. You're killing me. All right, so Mac's there. Now, you can also search the individual rooms, all right? So you can search these rooms and it's pretty easy to tell what's an individual room. So like this would be a room, that's a room, this is a room, but some of the bigger areas like over here, I'm probably gonna divide that like right there. So this would be a room and then down over here would be a room. Let's see. Let's have these guys both cut up this way and I will have big boy here do a search action and then move five inches so he'll have one four inch move one free action for the uh the extra inch and then one search action to place a token there so you place one of these little tokens to signify that you've searched the room let's grab our little measuring tool here five inches we'll get him to right about there all right and when you draw or when you search just a generic room, you're gonna draw out of this bag here, but the bag only has small stuff in it. 
So it only has the size tokens, not the big size tokens. So let's draw in here. I've got a bunch of extra tokens in here. Might be good, might be bad, might be a uh, pistol. Okay, well, it's not bad pistol. It's actually the same pistol the other guy's got. But I've already got a better weapon than that. But he doesn't. His pistol isn't as good as this one. Because it's only uh, one at range two. So I might actually have him pick that up. Okay. So. Actually, we're going to do this way. Because if he searched here first, that means he could leave it there and then move his five inches. Which means I can use his free action to pick it up and move eight inches. So hold on, let me grab my longer ruler because he's going to move eight. So he's gonna end up over there. All right, just a few more inches ahead. And now we can switch this out actually. So we'll pull out the worst pistol and have him switch this one out. A little bit less range, but he has more power now. There we go. Okay, so not a not a bad first turn. Have him end up there. That's our captain, by the way. That's Reaver? Weaver, Weaver. Gak, Mac, and then Renton is our other one. I think we're gonna go ahead and open this door in our next one, or maybe just go up to the window and shoot through the window. Try to kill that doctor, because <laughs> I'm going to try to kill everyone I can along on this mission. Uh, but that finishes up. My guys, there are tokens you can use to place near your guys. I'm not going to need them here when we're starting out. But just in case you need to remember, I've activated someone. You can place it here on their board or next to them there on the map itself. Okay, so technically, I do have one trader left. But again, I do not gain control of him until he realizes it's my guys who are in here. So he has to see one of my guys. They have to come around down over here or up there somewhere. He's got to know, hey, it's it's my guys there. Then I gain control of him and he can start shooting the, the gang members or whoever else is around. So we're actually going to go on to the purge phase now. Okay, so now since it is the purge phase, we have to look at our little chart here, a little track, and we do have to roll to see if any more harvesters come onto the map and then where they're going to come onto the map. Previous game, we didn't have to worry about the where, so this is basically just a D6. You see it does have a number, so we will roll this with the black die, and that will determine where and how many are showing up. And that is one at one. So let's grab another harvester here and he's going to appear here. There is a doorway right there and there's another doorway right there. Now the purge are going to activate uh, similar to how we are. They have so many actions. These little harvesters only get one action. The rest have at least two or more, the devastators, assassins, live ones, and then the other big guys. So we will give these guys one action. Their little action is just going to be move. So we will, sorry, my phone was dinging. We will move this purge up here to the door. Next one through, he'll come through and probably attack these guys, but they don't know he's there yet. And we'll move these purge. And remember these little squares on the table, on the little mat are one inch squares, So you can use them roughly as a measurement. Two, three, four, he'll get to about here. And me bumping that, go about the same distance. They're a touch far, but I'm trying to get them underneath that little overhang there. All right, so those purge are moving in, moving close to Weaver. I'm gonna have to take, uh, take them out here on the next turn before they get me in close range combat. Okay, so now we're in the NPC phase and that's normally where these guys are all gonna move and attack and do their stuff. I am not going to worry about moving the gangers yet. They're all going to stay around Zed until stuff gets kicked off. So basically until my guys make contact or they have a whole lot of purge uh, in the area around them, then they're going to activate. So when a bunch of purge start busting through these doors, 
then we'll worry about bringing those guys around, but they're going to stay there. So we don't have to worry about rolling for them. Uh, we just have to roll basically to see movement for any of our civilians. So we got civilians around in the area and we will move them. Let's see. You got one here, there, doctor up there and a couple more over there. We're just going to roll for their movement for now. All right. So let's do our doctor. Doctor is going this way. So he's actually gonna end up right there, which is good. He's right there next to the mirror. We'll do this one next. See where he's moving around to. He's going back this way. Right about here. I'm just following this arrow here. The thing is there's no one close by, so I'm not worrying about activating them to conduct an attack or anything like that. And next one is going back that way, which he can't go directly that way. So we'll move him close to the door and he can try to go through that on the next one. Other civilians, I've got two back there. So let's see if they move anywhere neat. All right, she goes down. We'll bring her down to the bottom of these stairs here. And then the last guy up on the landing is going back. So we'll bring him back over to here. And that's uh, that's just neat to have them kind of fluctuating around the board and see if they run into any purge or any bad guys or my guys. Like I said, I'm not cutting civilian slack on this one. I'm going to get them down with my guys <laughs> as we're going along. No mercy for the weak. They all must die. Now, the only other faction I would have to activate at this point would be the Galactic Core, but they have not come on yet. The minis for them are those right there. Those guys will be getting involved as they start coming onto the board here in the, uh, the following couple of rounds. All right, that's our first turn done. Actually, we are good to go. We do our cleanup phase, which is basically moving our activation counters back any other uh, end of round stuff, but uh, we're good at this point. So we can pick up on the next one, which we'll do on the following video. And since I won't have anything else I have to explain, we'll be able to get a couple of rounds in on the uh, the upcoming videos. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think. I'm panning the camera back across because I got to say this game, just one of the best looking games on the board. It just looks so good on your table. All the different type of terrain, all the stuff just looks so good. You've got Zed's bar hanging out there. I mean, tell me that just doesn't look awesome with all the little minis on it. Your guys, as they're moving through, it's just some of the best terrain. And the thing of it is, is it's not just that. It's the gameplay is good too. And like I said in my previous videos, it does so well in so many different ways whether or not you have a crew and your opponent has a crew, so it's two crews fighting each other or doing like I do, where it's your solo crew going through and fighting whatever type of enemy, which now I can have alien, space alien enemies too, so that's gonna be really cool. Or dealing with gangers or dealing with cops or whatever's going on. There's so many rules in the game, but it's not rule intensive that you can't play it. It's more like rule choice of, which set of these rules are you going to use uh, for your game today? You know, your, your competitive or your uh, cooperative type rules, you know? And basically the game just, it goes with a what flows, you know, what makes sense, what uh, what just makes the game easy and, and nice to play for you and, and your buddies, you know, real good stuff. I gotta say, they have an excellent system here. I really do like it. Now, of course it's not perfect. There's drawbacks to everything. One of the things I always hate on with this game is all the symbology that's in it. There's so much, oh wait, no, I shouldn't say symbology, symbolism. That's the word I'm looking for. I got the the thing from Boondock Saints stuck in my head. But yeah, all the symbols in the game, there's just so many. And yes, it helps after you've played it for a little while, but you're still gonna have to read in the rule book to what is this again? What is this again? What special rule or special ability does that give me? And you're having to try to keep track of that, especially on your, your characters. What does all this crap mean? It, it wears on you after a little bit. Ooh, I forgot. He has walk it off level two. That's actually a really good ability to come built in for a captain. Ooh, very nice. I'll check that out. All right. But anyway, you guys stay tuned. I will have part two coming up. Hopefully we can get 
engage, get stuck in with some of these purge. And remember, every time you fire, you have to pull one of your ammo pegs, these little golden pegs down here. And the first time a shot is fired by your guys each round, those pegs go in here. So the more you attack each round, the higher the purge level gets. So you kill purge, more purge come. You kill more of those purge, even more purge come. So that's definitely one of the neat aspects of the game. Like, do you want to go in silent or do you want to use melee? Cause there's no ammo on that and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, my guys do have some melee built in. This guy, he's got like crap for melee. Like here that's one and that armor is one, but you can't combine those. So one die is all he could roll. You can't like add up all your fists. Uh, together, but at least these guys have two, two, three, which is great for him. Anyway, okay, I'll stop rambling. You guys stay tuned. I'm going to be filming this uh, probably exclusively until I get it uh, done because it is taking a lot of room on my table right now. Plus, it's just awesome. Y'all take care. I'll catch you in the next one.